British organisation Campaign Against Arms Trade, CAT for short, has been attracting attention time and time again with its spectacular actions. Its members are on the spot when arms dealers plan to meet in the UK and use creative campaigning to raise public awareness. Our focus is on having an effective impact on the arms trade and there's lots of different angles you can take to approach that from. And I think by identifying the spaces where you can make a difference and really pushing and achieving those. That's how you can keep people interested and excited to keep taking action over the 40 years that we've existed. For its innovative and effective campaigning against the global trade in arms, CAT received the Right Livelihood Award in 2012. <laughs> It is a great honour to accept the Right Livelihood Award on behalf of Campaign Against Arms Trade. The award is a valued tribute to the work of thousands of people in the UK whose collective action has managed to expose, challenge and impede the arms trade since we began our work nearly 40 years ago. I got involved in Campaign Against Arms Trade when I was at university and I realised that my university was investing millions and millions of pounds in this trade. And it was another thing that brought it right to your doorstep. It seems really distant when you see conflict on television, but when you realise that actually even an academic institution could be playing such a role in its continuing that cycle was really shocking to me and it mobilised a lot of students to try and change that. And we've had quite a lot of success at different universities around the UK in getting them to pull out their investments out of the arms trade. It was initially a temporary campaign, but over the years it grew and um, continued to campaign uh, with a very tight focus on stopping Britain's arms exports. The trade in arms tends to be conducted discreetly. The people at CAT evaluate unwieldy publications and make the otherwise difficult to access information available, an important step in making the arms trade open to public scrutiny. We've produced a new online application which allows people to immediately see clearly what was sold uh, from Britain to where and when. Uh, in the past that was difficult information for journalists and decision makers to find, but our new application uh, makes that much quicker and more transparent. Campaign Against Arms Trade has for decades been saying that or exposing the hypocrisy of the UK government when on one hand it says it promotes democracy and human rights and on the other hand it's meeting the dictators who repress those rights to sell them more weapons. The UK sold weapons to Argentina weeks before the Falklands War. It sold arms to Saddam Hussein months before the first Gulf War. It actively courted Gaddafi weeks before going to war with him last year. For years, the National Gallery in London had been hosting receptions for international arms fairs. The rent for the dignified ambience amounted to £30,000. With creativity and humour, Kat demanded the disarming of the gallery. Finally, the museum gave in. Its premises will no longer be rented to arms dealers. Anne-Marie O'Reilly and Henry McLaughlin accepted the Right Livelihood Award on behalf of thousands of activists in the UK. Campaign Against Arms Trade is an inspiring example of how one can make a difference working for peace in a creative and non-violent way. You can either promote weapons or you can promote human rights. You can't do both. Mm -hmm.